Hello and welcome to Living Proof, the Isaac Newton Institute podcast. My name is Dan Aspel. In today's episode, myself and Christy Marr will be speaking to Yuri Semenov. Yuri is a participant in the newly created Solidarity for Mathematicians program, and he's going to tell us all about his experience of applying for and taking part in it. We hope you enjoy the episode. You are here at INI as part of uh, a relatively new program we have called the Solidarity for Mathematicians program. And there are a lot of things to touch on in that because until relatively recently you were living in Ukraine, the Solidarity program has given you an opportunity to come to the UK to continue yeah. your academic work. And we'd love to hear about that. And we'd love to hear about what your journey has been like, why you chose to apply to it and more about you as a mathematician and person as well. So which of those would you like to begin with? <laughs> okay, let's start from Solidarity Program. Excellent. I learned about Solidarity Program from my colleagues at the University of East Anglia, who forwarded me the link to apply. Uh, the application pro- process was very easy. It required uh, only my curriculum vitae. Uh, After I submitted the application, I heard uh, back within a couple of weeks. The University of East Anglia kindly offered to host me, gave access to the libraries, uh, physical and digital, and involved uh, in various events that uh, helped me to feel very included. I am deeply grateful to Isaac Newton Institute, London Mathematical Society, and the University of East Anglia for very warm welcome and friendly, productive atmosphere, which I feel every day. Well, that's wonderful. And, and where were you based when you were in Ukraine? What was your home institution and what was your work there? Um, currently, I work at the Institute of Hydromechanics of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, but uh, I am not so young, so I have big uh, uh, history of working history, and um, so I may say that I gradu- was graduated from the Dnipe uh, State University in 1981, so so long time ago. Uh, <clears throat> I, f- as I graduated as applied mathematician and started to work at the Academy of Science of Ukraine with focus on fluid dynamic and application with uh, aviation. However, the world is changing rapidly and after collapse of the Soviet Union, I changed the focus of my research to um, ocean engineering and started to uh, work abroad. My first country in my work experience uh, was Japan. Uh, I agree, I stayed uh, two years. I learned a lot. This is my first visit abroad, and I uh, learned a lot about um, various topics related to fluid dynamics and how to build uh, international collaboration. After leaving Japan, I worked as a researcher in Norway, South Korea, and the United Kingdom, of course. Uh, the area of my research interest, free surface uh, flows. This topic is also the, uh, intensively studied at Oxford University. Uh, so taking this uh, opportunity, I would like to uh, express my great my great thanks to Professor Emeritus John Ockendon, uh, who supported a lot of talent people in the United Kingdom and not only. Also, he supported my researches and my sensual sense to him for that. That's, that's lovely to hear and, and 
John has always been a great supporter of all mathematics, and um, so that's that's lovely. I'm sure he'll appreciate that shout out as well. <laughs> it's really interesting to hear of such an international career, and then the point we've reached now, where you've applied for the Solidarity Program. It's um, it's a very obvious question to ask because everyone listening knows why you will have applied to come to the UK from Ukraine. But would you mind telling us about your experience and why you applied for the Solidarity Programme? Uh, I applied first for Solidarity Programme, for, uh, obvious. Uh, um, big challenge uh, to apply it was war itself. Uh, when full-scale Russian invasion started, uh, I was in my home town, Dnipro, eastern central part of Ukraine. Uh, the first several days came with huge uncertainty, uncertainty, confusions and cancelled many plans. So life changed in one day. <laughs> Uh, the first several days come with uh, <clears throat> each day started with reading news and uh, tracking down the front line. The city is uh, within 200 kilometers from the front, li front line, and the war reminders uh, are frequent. People in military form, uniform, anti tank structures, uh, hedgehogs on the main streets. Uh, Frequent, frequent Syrians, sirens, around four or five times per day. When the first siren, siren came of a crowd, a crowd of neighbors uh, from the nine-story buildings, complexes, started uh, storming our apartment door because uh, my wife holds key to the basement. As Syrians um, became more frequent, uh, less and less people came. People started getting used to them and paying less attention. However, from time to time, rockets strike the town and, some and kill some people. It is uh, unpredicted where and when it may happen again. A lot of injured soldiers are evacuated into, in, the, in our town. Uh, I can be proud for <clears throat> Ukrainian, especially younger generation. Um, they self-organize it uh, to help people who are affected by the war. And there are a lot of Ukrainians, both inside the country and uh, abroad, who make uh, donation to supply hospitals with medicine and everything uh, that is necessary to survive people. Thank you very much for sharing that with us, Yuri, because I, I can only imagine how it would feel to have to say those things and relive those memories. Um, am I right in saying that your work in Ukraine was no longer possible. Uh, work of mathematician may be always possible because what is I need is table and uh, computer. That's uh, not so many, but uh, um, not possible to work in this uh, regime long time because uh, you need some communication with people. You need to see what is uh, other people doing and w what interesting to join some team to to do what I can, mm -hmm. do what, how can help in, in some topics. So eyes on the, in the world should be open <laughs> uh, for mathematician too. And in fact, actually, you managed to, um, as part, you're over here now, but in fact, you've taken advantage of being over here to actually join in the recent Newton Institute workshop, so the workshop on the mathematics of sea ice. You were actually here participating in for the two weeks, and I think you gave one of the seminars as well. Yeah. Uh, Indy provided fantastic support uh, within the Satellite uh, Solidarity Programme. 
And not only financial support, which is of course is important to stay in the UK, but also opportunity to start collaboration with uh, world leading scientists is invaluable. Uh, I greatly enjoyed the workshop Mathematics uh, of CIs in 21st century, uh, hosted by the Isaac and Newton Institute recently. The workshop was will hosted at higher level with the talks recorded and posted on YouTube. This ex the access to the presentation anytime, anywhere uh, is recently technology introduced by the Isaac Newton Institute and I believe it will increase the impact of the events, uh, all events supported by the INI. Okay. I also was excited to meet many colleagues uh, who arrived from all over the world many, many distance from here. And that workshop, like all of our workshops, was very, very international. Um, and it was actually a follow-up workshop to the programme that we'd had a few years before on the mathematics of sea ice. So it was lovely. Many of the people were participants who'd been on that programme and who were coming back to the Institute again. But yeah. there were also a lot of new faces, like yourself, in fact, yeah. who hadn't been participants on the original workshop. But um, Yeah. And, uh, what is interesting is that some, as you told, some people already second time uh, attending this workshop, uh, other people first time, but it's very friendly uh, atmosphere and uh, one day it's enough to, to become a part of the community. That's lovely to hear. Do you have any colleagues still working in Kyiv or any other Ukrainian cities at the moment? Is, Ye yes. is, is science still happening? Yes, uh, I'm in contact uh, permanently with my institute, with my colleagues. I provide, uh, I provide an information about events which are, um, ex can be exited uh, uh, using internet. Yes, o online. Events. Online, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, events. Uh, so I, I communicate and uh, talk about um, what I am doing uh, here, at the, how organized um, scientific work, how organized teaching process. So uh, there are a lot of things we need to learn and uh, introduce in, in Ukraine, All, especially in Academy of Sciences. Because in our country, the system has two directions. Academy of Science, it's res that is uh, research institutes without students, and uh, universities, which are um, focused with education. So in the UK, these two um, systems are united. <laughs> and it is very effective, uh, I believe it's very effective in terms of economics. Yes. It's good to hear that, um, although the circumstances behind it are horrific, that this has created that link and given that um, bond between Ukraine and the UK for lessons to be learned in both directions. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question for you. So you heard about the Solidarity Scheme um, through your colleagues at UEA, and I was wondering, are, is, are colleagues in the Ukraine, do they know of the scheme um, are we? Are there other ways that we could be promoting it? Uh, I also um, tell my colleagues in Ukraine about this uh, program, uh, uh, availability of this program to apply, uh, possibility to apply, and uh, but there is some problem. People between 18 and 60 are restricted to leave Ukraine. Yes. I mean. Uh, Male. Yes. <laughs> so it's uh, some easier for female or like me. Yes. Who over <laughs> this, <laughs> this boundary. Yes. Um, so yes, we're very much aware of that restriction. Um, uh, although that doesn't. So we have two parts of our um, scheme that are available. So the one is um, for uh, refugees of war. Um, and the other part of the scheme, the other strand that we have is for political refugees. And so if that's for people from other countries, there might not be the same 
age restrictions um, there. So we, we are seeing a different demographic um, of applicants for these two uh, different streams. But as you say, for certain age groups, it's only the female mathematicians yeah. on your scheme that have been able to apply. Yeah. And Yuri, do you have any, um, anything you'd like to pass on to others who might want to apply for the Solidarity Scheme? What would you say to somebody who's considering applying for the Solidarity? Uh, I only suggest, uh, strongly suggest to apply for this programme uh, many people and um, in Ukraine and uh, I also try to help them to understand how to do that and what they need not only to apply how they need to walk uh, present your his outcome papers uh, because books. that's correct because yes. you're you're correct in what you're saying because the scheme is open only to research active mathematicians because obviously we can't support yeah. the entire world so we're supporting our community mm-hmm. so um, people who are research active and who work in the mathematical sciences and that's um, what the eligibility criteria are yeah I uh, it's uh, understandable that uh, if there is some c- competition so more productive and more significant uh, achievements will be given prefer- <laughs> preference. But it's all done. We have a um, we have a, a two committees that um, assess them. So it's it's all done um, by these independent uh, committees. So that's a very important part of the scheme for us. So it's a um, a proper application like an INI program would be. And actually, I need to say that people in Ukraine, they are very respect uh, competition, very respect decision made by committee and other university. That is um, what we need to improve in Ukraine. <laughs> if I could ask a question, which um, it might seem strange because no one can tell the future, particularly now, what are your plans? for the coming months or year? What do you think the future holds for you? Uh, thank you. This is a good, important question. Uh, cu- currently, I am uh, using this opportunity to stay in the UK and communicate with other colleagues all over the world. I can say that I'm looking for my next job. And uh, there are some responses uh, which give me some hope that I will find a new job in a few months. I believe it will be sooner than the end of the, my solidarity program. That's, 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 that's really good to yeah. know because, yeah. in fact, one of the motivators for this scheme, which is why it is... Um, essentially it's a stipend, stipend, so you get a per diem and an an accommodation allowance. Um, And the scheme was set up as a stepping stone to help people who were in a difficult situation in their home country to be able to buy them some time and help nurture their research during that period in order for them to secure something more permanent. And so that's really nice to hear that you are using it to exactly that end. Absolutely. Christy, were there any more questions you'd like to ask at the moment? No, I think it's just been a real joy um, speaking to you, Yuri. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your insights. And and we think this is a really important scheme that we really value in the Institute. And it was um, very much appreciated that you've given us your time coming back to Cambridge after having been here for the past two weeks um, to share with us your experiences. Um, I would like... To express my great thanks to the Institute, INI, Isaac Newton Institute, to, uh, who gave me fantastic uh, opportunity to to continue my research and uh, leave the danger place. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you very much.